It's time for Friday Follies, right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated R and is recommended restricted for anyone under the age of 17. Welcome to the Mental Health Care Automated Phone System. If you know your party's extension, please enter it now. If you would like to make an appointment with a mental health care specialist, please press 1. If you would like to change an appointment, please press 2 now. If you're feeling paranoid or delusional, please remember that sometime during the night we came over to your house and planted small microscopic worms in the earpiece of your phone. By now they've burrowed their way into your skull and are nesting inside your brain. We're using them to track your position at all times via satellite and read your thoughts. At the moment, a thin layer of marmalade spread all over your head, followed by wrapping your entire body in tinfoil may be your only defense. But we're not saying for sure. <laughs> Ow! I thought I told you to stay oh, on script. Oh, oh, sorry. Now stop Tom fooling around and read it like I told you to. Oh, all right, all right. <clears throat> if you are feeling paranoid or delusional and believe that you are being monitored or somehow threatened by an international conspiracy involving Jews, Satanists, and every form of liberal imaginable, please stay on the line and a member of the Constitution Party will be along any moment now to take your membership application. That's more like it. And if you'd like a good, solid belly laugh from listening to a comedy podcast, then go ahead and enter this number. Wait a second. March. Stop it. Stop. 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 What are you doing? That's not in the script either. I'm... I'm starting the show up. You know, we get we always try to find a way to kind of shoehorn the beginning so that you mention technical difficulties title and the date of the show and then and then we start the podcast. The pod what? The podcast. That's what we've been doing here for the last year. You know, we record the show and then we post it on the internet so people can hear it. The all radio alternative, you know, people on the radio don't hear the radio shows because so these are radio shows that only you can hear then no huh? not just me i mean anybody with an ipod can hear them you just wear the ipod uh, ipod um uh-oh what's um uh, you know maybe i should go downstairs and find uh, someone from the, the mental health department to talk um, to you for just a little bit i'll, I'll go i'll be no, right back and you, you just no, relax no no, no that's here. that's cool you know what you know what you stay here and i'll i'll um i'll go talk to them myself i could i could use some some air so um yeah you just stay there and uh i'll be back keeps him on his toes <clears throat> If you are listening to Technical Difficulties for March 30th, 2006, please press 4 now. Your call is important to us. Please stay on the line. Welcome back once again to Technical Difficulties. I'm your host, Kyan Chris Conroy. For the last Thursday of March, we're almost into April, for God's sake. Jeez, boy. Well, here in Minneapolis, it's rainy. The shoots of the tulips and the jonquils and the daffodils are coming up out of the ground, and all the snow is finally gone. So I guess it really is spring, and it only took that long for it to start. You bastards in warmer climates. Ugh. Anyway, this is the first uh, the first week I've tried out my new technique where I've recorded the show in advance before this week, for the most part. Actually, that's not entirely true. I still have some stuff to stick in there that I thought of at the last minute. But it was very nice to get almost a week uh, off, which I needed to, uh, to build a mantle. I built a mantle over my fireplace out of bricks and mortar, and it's it was really hard and messy. Anyway, the show's about to start. This week's episode of Technical Difficulties is proudly brought to you by the makers of Collaxinator with their brand new phone upgrade system, Vibranator. Hey, Jerome. Hey, Hiram. Dude, why didn't you return my phone call last night? Oh, did you call? I have my phone set to vibrate, and it's just so weak I didn't feel it. Ah, dude, too bad. We went to a really great movie last night. You missed out. And then after the movie, on the way out the door, we got picked up by a stretch limo full of supermodels, Uh and they gave us, like, drugs, Uh and, and, like, we had an orgy for six hours. And then when we left, they gave us each a million dollars in cash. 
Damn it! Are you tired of missing all those important calls because the vibrator in your mobile phone is just too weak? Well, why not try the new phone upgrade system, Vibrinator, from the makers of Klaxinator. Installing into most standard phone kits, it significantly upgrades your phone's vibration system, ensuring that you'll never miss another call. Well, Jerome, I'll be ready for another night of hot action as soon as I get that phone call. Well, I sure hope the vibration in your phone is enough to alert you I wouldn't want to miss the call. Well, don't worry, it will be, because I've got new... <laughs> Dude, I think the phone is totally for you. Oh, my spinal column! That's Vibernator from the makers of Klaxinator, available wherever phone upgrade systems and earth-moving equipment are sold. Also brought to you by Lesbian Wall Systems. Lesbian Wall Systems for that down-home, handcrafted, rough-hewn look that's all tongue and groove and no studs. That's Lesbian Wall Systems. Also brought to you by Mucus. Mucus, is it in you? <laughs> You're damn right it is, and you better well keep it there, you sick bastard. That's Mucus. And brought to you by Absolution Car Exorcists. You know they say the devil's in the details, and we'll make sure to pull it right out of the details while detailing your car. That's Absolution Car Exorcisms. Come in with a sinful car and leave with a clean conscience. And remember, our key is good old-fashioned service. Hello, um, is anybody here? Hello there, young man. Welcome to Absolution Motors, where old-fashioned service is key. Rooty toot toot. So, can I inspect under the hood of your motor car? Um, actually, I came to get a whistle tip uninstalled that got put on there by accident. Well, 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 well. I'll get my boys right on it. In the meantime, would you care to join me over at the soda fountain to get a ginger beer or perhaps a <laughs> sarsaparilla? No, that, that's probably not necessary. Oh, well, perhaps you'd like to borrow this here striped jacket and get a one of our velocipedes. Tootle down to the park and listen to some of that old yeah. ragtime jazz? Uh, no, 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 the car, just working on the car is just I, fine. Or I mean, perhaps just, I could um, offer you some wax for your handlebar mustache? I don't have a mustache. More's the pity, young man. You should get one. There are the bee's knees, you know. Is that a good thing? No idea. You'll have to ask a beekeeper. Oh, please come in. Hi, I was sent here by an old-timey auto mechanic to ask you a question about bees anatomy. Well, young man, you certainly come to the right place. My name is Professor Warminster Adelson, and they call me the great friend... Bees. Yes, I'm just noticing that your house seems to be full of them. Indeed, that's true, young man, for I consider them even more so than the dog to be man's best friend. Don't they sting you? Almost continuously. Look at how swollen I am. Yes, you do look a bit uh, puffy, don't uh, you? Indeed, I do, but it's all in good fun for nature's jester, the striped yellow bee. They are fascinating and amazing creatures. Did you know? Would you believe that a single bee could pollinate an entire football field's worth of flowers in one week, and that it can fly at over 300 miles an hour, and that one single bee could fight off an entire school of hungry piranha fish. No, I don't believe that at all. And well, you should, young man. But don't take my word. I'm just a strange old man who lives in his honey farm with the walls all full of bees. How do you get to the honey if the bees live in the walls? My dear boy, I do not take honey from my bees. No, that would be like stealing from my best friends. No, no, no. Well, then where do you get the honey from? I get them from those crocodiles at your feet. You can't get honey from a... Ah, crocodile! Man gets knees bitten off by beekeeper's crocodile. Next on Action News. <laughs> Hello, and, uh, uh, um, oh, welcome back to the Action News, uh, time thing at the top, uh, of the hour. I am your anchor person, uh, I'm, uh, person Steve. Hello. And I'm here to give you the roundup on the, uh, week, uh, the, uh, world news, and, uh, I, there's, uh, I'll just read the news about the hostage situation. Uh, there's the prompter. Uh, I'm just a poor boy. Nobody loves me. He's just a poor boy from a poor family. Spare him his life for this monstrosity. Easy come, easy go. Will you let me go? Bismillah. No, we will not let him go. Let him go. Bismillah. We will not let him go. And suddenly it occurs to me that I am not a newscaster. I'm at a karaoke bar. Meanwhile, back at the 24-hour news studio. And here's Tom with the local weather. Arctic air is moving down from Canada. Arctic air is moving down from Canada. Spare us this cold as we freeze off our balls. If I could get some quiet, please. Ladies and gentlemen, please. 
Please, thank you. Please, thank you. Yes, I just came here to say that I have talked to the producer of our all-night news program, and we have absolutely no explanation as to why our weatherman started singing the weather to Bohemian Rhapsody. All right, Phil, does this mean that you're going to start incorporating uh, music into your news broadcasts in the future? Not necessarily, but we are planning on putting a focus group on it just to see, you know, if the idea has knees or not. Uh, Philip? Did the weatherman in question pay any royalties for singing the weather to Bohemian Rhapsody? No, he did not. He did not clear that with us, and... And he's in a metric buttload of trouble for that, too. Evidently, Queen's lawyers are not to be trifled with. Allison? While all this is very interesting, Phil, uh, wasn't this press conference ostensibly so you could announce your candidacy for president? Well, that is what I told all of you over the phone. Uh, but in reality, I just like holding press conferences and drawing you all out like the little marionettes that you are. Dance, little puppets, at my command! <laughs> Executive producer of All Night News, Phil Adelman, at a press conference today. And now with an editorial rebuttal on the subject, we swerve over to my co-host, Tom Speckle. This breaking news just in, veteran anchorman Tom Speckle was murdered today when his co-host ran him over with a 24-hour news program. Police have issued an APB for 37-year-old Carol Scherberger. She is considered armed and extremely watchable, last seen driving the 24-hour action news channel somewhere along the cable spectrum. So the police recommend that the public simply sit around and watch cable all day. If you spot her, call us, and we'll try to get her off the air. See, Dad, I told you. I told you. The guy on TV said we had to watch cable all day long for the good of the country. Yeah, Dad. Well, far be it from me to question a voice of authority that comes glaring at me out of a glowing screen. Kids, get some snacks. We're going on a stakeout. It's our patriotic duty. Yes, dear friends, it's everyone's patriotic duty to stand up for America by sitting down and watching lots and lots of television. Start the music, Fred. Ah, television. The great American pastime, now the pastime of the entire human race. In this fast-paced modern world full of conflict and drama, isn't it nice to know that all of its fantastic kaleidoscope of diversity can be delivered straight to your living room and beamed directly into your eyes by this most venerable of modern inventions? It's all here. Art, comedy, culture, religion, entertainment, philosophy, propaganda, revolution, counter-revolution, politics, sports, and news. Oh, let's not not forget news. And all the latest products displayed in interesting and innovative sales pitches. Chopped, edited, spun, packaged, repackaged, annotated, deconstructed, exalted, and vilified right before your tantalized eyes and you didn't even have to get up off the couch. And that's before you even hook up any of the amenities or extensions. DVD players, digital recorders, the venerable videotape, game consoles, web surfing. And thanks to desktop computers, themselves powerhouse extensions of the concept of television, we can even make our own forms of audiovisual entertainment that we can entertain ourselves, our family, our friends, our neighbors, and total strangers with. Now I understand there are naysayers among you who claim that this digital entertainment is a waste of time, a detriment to society, that we have become unhealthy, disconnected, isolated info junkies. To them, I only say, fiddle-faddle. We are not info junkies, we are infophages. Television, digital entertainment, digital information, one of the mind's basic food groups now. With our ecstatic lips wrapped around the nipple of technology, we gleefully gorge ourselves from the bosom of culture. That's right, culture. You see, friends, the human animal is a creature born without instinct. Our greatest evolutionary resource is the collected knowledge bestowed upon us by our fellow humans. But here, in the technological vastness of the future, that process is not only automated by science, but amounts to a monolithic ocean of information that we are plunged into at birth. I, for one, say we must learn to swim in this ocean. Embrace it. Make it our next evolutionary step. Swim as dolphins do. And navigate through not letting the culture wash over and drown you, but becoming its master, and learning to discern its various tributaries and currents. Now, am I suggesting even for a moment that we should simply remain isolated in a cocoon of information? Yes. Yes, as a matter of fact, I am. Like it or not, we're all cyborgs now. Television has become the vault of our culture. The internet has become our collective unconscious, and personal computers and portable media devices have become extensions of our memory, our intelligence, and our very souls. It's just like a William Gibson novel, only without having to have anything installed in your brain or wearing cool sunglasses. So in conclusion, turn on that TV, snap on the internet, put on those headphones, and enjoy the ride. Just get out for some exercise, some fresh air, and a cup of coffee once in a while. Well, what do you think? 
You call that a serious proposal? You'll never work in this town. Get out of my office. Ah, uh, peas. Mm, yeah. Hey. Damned academic egghead intellectual no, manifesto shameful. types trying to make television out to be more than I say it is. They're supposed to just sit there and s- sit quietly and enjoy what we serve up to them. That's the whole point. We've been doing it this way for years. I don't see why it should have to change now. No, no, no It's a passive form of entertainment. Our entire economy and my stock portfolio, for that matter, is based on that assumption. Yes, yes, it is. Well, I'm glad you all agree with me anyway. Speaking of my stock portfolio, does anyone know how we did today? No, no I don't, sir. No, 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 no I don't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Why don't we turn on the TV and find out? Ah, good thinking. Here, I'll just get the switch. Ah, let's see what we've got here. Ah, oh, it's Action 24-Hour News. Oh, my God, and it's headed right for us! Ah! And remember, this program has been proudly brought to you by Adelson's Crocodile Honey. Now a new wildebeest flavor. Mm-mm, it's the bee's knees. I'll say it is, Buster. And that brings us to the end of Technical Difficulties. I have been your host, Kai and Chris Connor. I hope you certainly have enjoyed the show. I want to thank you all for the nice emails you sent me. Um, without being specific... <laughs> What can I say? Um, Because I can't think of any off the top of my head. I really should have it more organized, but that will be coming in the coming month. You see, I may have mentioned this to you last time, and I'll mention it again this time. I have a brand new scheduling system set up for the month, merry month of April, and hopefully it'll work out. (coughs) Excuse me. Hopefully it'll work out very, very well, um, or I'll go out of my mind uh, one way or the other. The idea is I'm going to get all four episodes for the month uh, done in the first week, at least in the basic, you know, most uh, complete stage, and then I'll edit them each on a week-by-week basis so I can add the thing at the end, you know, the talking to the audience bit in with the talking and the, and the funny and the, and the ending of the show um, at the end of, the sh- of each show and at the beginning. Any sort of pertinent information. If I come up with any jokes that would fit there, I'll slot them in. But that's the whole idea. Next week, I'm going to try and complete four, count them four shows in a single week, or get as close to that as possible so I can give myself a break. Nothing's getting done around here, so i got to revamp my schedule. Which means next week, uh, you have until sometime next week, (laughs) if you can help it, um, to try and send in them funny ideas, which can be sent to me, or you can just contact me. Well, here, before I give you out the email address, I'll explain. I'm collecting, well, I'm, well I, I want to do a little bit of an experiment. People have been sending me jokes. And if you send me some jokes, I'm going to put them in a stack, and I'll get to each one that I, if I possibly can, and work them however I can. People have been nice enough to send me some ideas for jokes that will be accredited to you. And one of the episodes next month will have a whole segment in it, or perhaps there'll be several segments over a couple of episodes. I don't know exactly how this is going to work out. But I'm going to incorporate some ideas that people send to me in a, as humor. People keep sending me jokes, and um, I'm going to use them. That's that simple. I just want to give credit where credit is due. And my credit is due now. So I'm going to uh, tell you that you can send that information or anything else you want to send me. Don't send me complete sketches. Um, I'd rather just you send me an idea that I can work with or just, you know, whatever, a loosely based idea, wh- whatever you want to do with that. And I'll, I'll work it in somehow. Um, anyway, you can send that to techdiff at gmail.com or you can send that to, that's T-E-K-D-I-F-F, or techdiff at tcinternet.net. Or Cayenne at tcinternet.net. I also encourage you to check out my wife's podcast, uh, uncomfortable-questions.com, and uh, our uh, video podcast that I'll be working on this week, too. My God, I'm going to try and do five podcasts in one week. That should be interesting. Um, that's uh, uh, channelsurfingwipeout.com, which you can subscribe to all of these in iTunes. And uh, like that. So I will see you guys again next week. And. Uh, that's it, really. I uh, will be back again next week with brand spanking new material and a little bit fried from all the work I'm doing. Uh, that's it. Okay, well, talk to you guys later. Bye. Thank you for listening to Friday Follies right here on the Mutual Audio Network. Please consider subscribing to other days of the Mutual Feeds, including Monday Matinee for classic, live, and theatrical audio plays. Tuesday Terrors for horror audio drama. Wednesday Wonders, our science fiction and fantasy magazine. Thursday Thrillers for action, adventure, mystery, and crime drama. Saturday Story Circle for kids and families alike. And Sunday Showcase, bringing you 
the very newest in audio releases for the week from our United Artists of Audio, right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The Mutual Audio Drama Network, where we listen and imagine together.